Well, we're wrapping up our stay here at the Heritage RV Park in Corning, California, after we visited the Olive Pit Corning, California Harvest Host, where we could have stayed if we weren't chicken to uh, tough out being without hookups and electricity when it's 106 degrees. Um, I can tell you that even though one of my three air conditioners does uh, not work anymore, it trips my breaker, that the two air conditioners were able to easily keep up with things. Of course, you'll notice that we were actually in a shaded spot. Now, this was advertised as a pull-through site, and normally I could have done that, but there was a big rig next to me, so it required me to duck out quite a bit before I would turn to the left, and it would have necessitated me bothering one of the neighbors to move their vehicle. Uh, when I walked over there, I saw that they had a walker outside their rig, and I thought that I can probably back out easier than uh, rousing them out and uh, troubling them to get in their vehicle not knowing what their full disability is, so uh, that really was no problem. I'm a little bit uh, proud of my 2014 Dutch Star here. It's actually dirty, but it still shines and has got a depth of uh, mirror finish in its paint job. Thank you, Numar. What you'll see here next is we're gonna hook up our Honda, and uh, we both have our own jobs, so we're pretty good at it. And we can do it in three minutes real time. And then there's about four or five minutes of monkeying around, heating up the engine and uh, shifting it into uh, neutral the proper way. I can tell you that uh, really, really try to convince yourself not to get a trailer to put your vehicle on just because you own it already or because you think you really, really like it. Um, I can tell you an extremely high percentage of the people ultimately end up going and getting a different vehicle to pull four down. Save yourself the trouble and money. So this is Mount Shasta in the background and just a little example of why I like driving out west. It's unbelievably beautiful. So I found that if I try to maintain my momentum because I can go up hills faster than an older, fully loaded truck, but I certainly don't go down them faster because uh, because of my comfort level and Sue's comfort level, which is just as important as mine. Otherwise, we'll be done RVing. If she's terrified every time we drive. Um, well, the mountains. Yeah. Every time. And going down the mountains with the comfort drive and with the jig brake, the two-stage, I have an older RV with a 450 horsepower diesel, and it's got a low and a high, and in high, I have 365 horsepower of restraining motion, so I literally can go down the hill without using my brakes. So it's very nice. Like right now, I've got it floored, and I have been since I've been talking. I'm starting to gain speed on this truck here. Um, it's a long enough grade. I might change lanes here. I might live to regret it again. But uh, normally, I try to let the trucks go ahead of me because, like I said, they go down the hills a lot faster. Look at how macho this truck is with these pipes. He's the man. A meter, baby. Well, you wouldn't catch him taking a mouse out of his electrical department with a rubber gloves on and a flyers, I'll tell you that right now. Trucks and RVs go straight to the back.
というか、あのじゃあ、親に出しておいます。親が。Yeah, good spot here, honey. Alright, so what did you want to do? Generator? Yeah, generator, dollop, half a turkey, coffee, kisses, TV, radio old fashioned. Many times Sue has told me that I think a little different than the average bear, and I guess I just realized that because. As beautiful as this is, and if Sue wants to pan around here, even this way,、uh, the truck stop, there's miles, mountain, in, mountain, there's our destination that way somewhere. We got this great airport here, the windsock. I'm looking at this, this、uh, chair here. You know what was my first、uh, thing that I thought of? My first thing was if I was a young lad and I was 18, 19 years old and I was dating again, this would be one of my date spots that I'd bring my dates. To a rest stop. Yeah, we, could, we could park. We got a nice、uh, pavilion to hit the restroom. Maybe they got a couple of snacks, get some chips.、Oh、we got a nice thing to、uh, uh, sit on. It's beautiful. All right, the view is awesome. The rest, I don't know about that. Imagine we were just starting the day, honey. Oh, and it's nice and warm. Oh, oh is that so good on your back? Yeah, it's like a sauna. So then I would pack a、uh, romantic lunch of、uh, some nice wine and、uh, a nice charcuterie, some wines that I got in Napa. And I would share them. I would share them with my date. Yeah. The rest stop with the mountain and the dog. Yeah, Miles is running with the big boys here with all the big rigs. Yep, you gotta be a big boy. Be running with them all. <sighs> Time to resume our relaxing ride in the beautiful scenery of the Midwest. But We all know what comes next. You've got to be prepared for elevation changes like this. So let's have a little discussion of what it's like to drive a rear engine diesel with a jake brake. So you saw that 6% grade sign, and that's when I use the jake brake. I have a switch that's either low or high, it's either three cylinders or six cylinders. But I'm on six cylinders. I actually have 365 horsepower holding me back. Right now, I'm actually stepping on the gas a little bit because my speed is at 48. I crawled up this mountain at about 42. So technically, you want to go down at about the same speed. I don't want to impede traffic too bad. You can see this truck is passing me. I just took my foot off the gas and I can feel. That I'm leaning into my seatbelt a little bit, and if you look over here, 53, 51, 50, I'm slowing down too much. So counterintuitively now, I have to press on the gas to go downhill. But the key takeaway is that I'm not using my brakes. I'm just modulating my gas pedal to go whatever speed Sue and I are both comfortable with.、Um, If I'm a little bit slower than trucks going down the hill, I'm doing good. If I'm driving like them, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, with me. <laughs> All right, first time I've ever been in Oregon. So I got to tell you, folks, here's a first in four years of full time travel. I never saw a speed versus weight chart, but it really does make sense because, based on the amount of、uh, downgrade and the length of the downgrade, you can pretty much predict when you'll have a runaway speed. And if you don't want to abide by those speeds, get ready to use one of these ramps. And oh, by the way, one of them is being repaired. So plan on only using the last one. 
So the way these ramps work, uh, this is a gravel ramp and it might be a foot or two deep and you just uh, take that exit and you plow into that gravel and it grabs uh, all of your axles and slows you down. We've seen another style that is a ramp that sort of goes up at a hill and you see that a lot on the side of mountains. I took a little chance when I booked this state park. We normally don't go in them because we know that they're too small for uh, our rig. But this one was uh, pretty special, it had a lot of full hookup and electric and water sites. So we took a chance here and as you can see, uh, probably shouldn't have booked it. This was way too small of an inner radius for me to ever hope to be able to go all the way around this thing. Uh, the minute I was parking this, I knew I had to back up a few times and just stuff it in here and, uh, you know, be done with it. But I pretty much knew that I would have to leave this spot the same way I came in it. Um, like a lot of spots that we back into, it had the same problem where we encounter a concrete curb that we have to contend with. Got a big curb back here. And three feet. You want me to straighten it out like I am? So I've been agonizing since the day I got here at the state park. Sue, so don't fall over the camera tripod. We're going to do a combination of things we talked about. You see this curb here? This is what's really screwing me up. And it's like the serrated blade on a, on a knife for cutting a 2 by 4 so it's not going to be real good on the old tires. But I think we're going to take Miles and I'm going to bumpity bump him over this. I'm going to miss that tree. I'm going to go as straight as I can into that silver pickup truck over there. Then I'm going to throw the driver's nose and just miss C3 and C2. And then I'm going to try to miss this thing. Hopefully my rear tires all the time will be tracking along this inner rim here and then we'll go out that way and we're gonna hope for, hope it works <laughs> so what what's the issue why are we doing this well, we didn't know how tight this circle was right well it's it's totally a, uh, my fault uh, when i booked this place uh, a lot of places when it tells you how long it is it's how long it is for you to stuff the rig and then it almost always there's parking right next door well this wasn't like that this was 48 feet grass on both sides so we had to park remotely for a week but the real corker is is that when they said 48 feet it also affected how long you have to be going around this circle and like i had mentioned this is a circle in a circle so picture a lollipop that's your entrance road and the outer of the lollipop is where we should be and we're kind of like at the target zone we're, we're we're the money shot on the inside here so you'll notice it's all smaller rigs with the exception of that solitude there and when i saw him come in he was driving over the curb all the way yeah, in too yeah see this is unusual yeah. too that we have curb yeah usually there is no curb it's just yeah. grass. So it's my fault. So, and I, it's a narrow road. Pretty I accept narrow. the responsibility. So if we have four flats in a couple of minutes, you guys will know why. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that. Well, here we go. Time to execute the plan. So Sue and I uh, looked at what curbing and things we would have to drive over and we made our best attempt to not drive over sprinkler nozzles and things that uh, may not give uh, and could puncture a tire or I guess worse yet something that we would damage uh, we don't want to do that uh, what you'll see here this uh, movie has been speeded up to uh, twice actual speed and even at that you can see how slow I'm operating. You see the uh, rig kind of shaking like that. When you have air brakes um, they're pretty touchy and I'm on air suspension so the minute the rig uh, stops the rig will bounce around a little bit on the air suspension. I don't even feel that or notice that when I'm uh, in the front cab there.
Now I think this is an example if you had more people involved spotting here. I probably could have drove over this curb and then stayed in the grass as needed and then last minute bumped over it. But uh, Sue couldn't be in two places at once so we pretty much figured it is what it is and whatever's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. Certainly wasn't the best for the tire. So this particular uh, maneuver we were doing actually turned out pretty good this day. Uh, the usual didn't happen and that is usually you'll have a giant gaggle of people watching you and pointing and just sitting there. I mean they might as well get a chair and crack a beer. So that didn't happen and then plus Sue actually wore uh, a orange shirt so that she could be seen real well in case somebody would uh, try to enter this roadway with something that was big and would have been in the way or would have been something where they in fact wouldn't have been able to back up and then we would have a big giant cork in the bottle here. We actually did it. We went over the curb a couple times though. We drove out of the park and into the dump site area and we were going to hook up there but it kind of looked like we'd be in the way for people using the dump station so to be a good RV citizen uh, we went a little bit further down the way until we found a good spot to hook the uh, toad up. Ah, a Fifi, now I can get the work. You know, sometimes are easier than others hooking this thing up, and I actually did a little editing here because we had to move the Honda, not once that you saw there, but we had to actually move it again, and usually we're better at guessing the distance it needs to be at before we start attaching. We have a Blue Ox 10,000 pound hitch and what you see me hooking up there are the safety cables. You of course crisscross them and uh, attach them to your tow vehicle. Last thing that Sue handed me here is the 7 pin connector that controls the directionals as well as the electrics to the control module for our Air Force One braking system. The blue hose is the air hose uh, attachment from the motorhome to the Air Force One module, so I have proportional braking. And then that curly orange uh, light gauge wire, that's the breakaway connection in case the whole shooting match disconnects from the motorhome. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you stopping in, and we'll see you next week.